Good morning. My name is Mary Yost and I'm president of the Sage Group LLC. This morning I'd like to talk to you about the economic costs of PAD. However, before we get into the presentation, I have several disclosures to make. The Sage Group LLC is a for-profit research and consulting company. We sell our products and services to industry, the client list, and from time to time we do own stocks. These stocks are the current holdings that might be relevant to this presentation. The annual economic cost of PAD is between 164 and 290 billion. The 164 billion figure represents the per patient costs in the US REACH registry that was about 24,000 plus patients. The 290 billion dollars represents the per patient costs in the Margolis Managed Care Study. The primary difference between these two cost figures is the fact that in the, in the REACH registry, they looked at cardiovascular and PAD costs only, whereas in the Managed Care Registry, they looked at all-cause hospitalization, and that therein lies the difference in the per patient costs. Now it turns out that hospital costs represent the majority between 62 and 87 percent of PAD costs or in the REACH registry 102 billion in the managed care study 253 billion. Two other studies of Medicare have also found that almost 90 percent of the costs are hospital costs. By way of comparison in, in the US total hospital costs represent only about 31 percent of healthcare expenditures. Non-PAD costs are significant. If you look at cardiovascular hospital, hospitalizations only, 43% of the costs are not related to PAD. However, if you look at all-cause hospitalizations, almost 90% of the costs are not related to PAD. Who pays the PAD bill? Medicare and Medicaid pay 75% of the national bill. In other words, your tax dollars. If we examine PAD patients in Medicare, 7 to 10 percent of Medicare patients actually were treated for PAD. The per patient cost was between $25,000 and almost $63,000. Now the difference in that range reflects both the definition of PAD in the, in the two studies that we looked at as well as the types of services and care that were included. Specifically, long-term care was included in that higher cost figure. Um, above the knee amputation significantly was the third most common procedure that was performed in Medicare PAD patients. If we examine annual expenditures on PAD patients in Medicare, they're about $63,000, again using the higher figure that includes long-term care costs. Compared with the average expenditure on a Medicare patient is only about $9,800. So there's a huge difference between these two uh, spending. In PAD, about three quarters of PAD patients are actually asymptomatic. That means they don't have intermittent claudication and they don't have critical limb ischemia. The rest of the patients, there's about 2.7 million with critical limb ischemia according to our estimates and about 1.8 million with intermittent claudication. And it's these symptomatic patients that are primarily those that are treated, although by no means are all of these patients treated. Looking at costs for symptomatic versus asymptomatic patients, if we look at the REACH data, they defined symptomatic as patients that either had intermittent claudication, they had had a revascularization, or they had had an amputation. Asymptomatic patients were defined by ABI less than 0.9, plus they had no lower extremity uh, ischemic symptoms. Comparing the costs of those two groups, symptomatic versus asymptomatic in REACH, the costs were about the same. For the asymptomatic patient, the, the average annual cost was about $6,200. For symptomatic, as evidenced by the intermittent claudication patient, it was about 6,600, so there wasn't much of a difference. Both patient groups were treated for PAD symptoms, a little bit more for the symptomatic, and both patient groups were treated for cardiovascular symptoms. 
the key difference in these two patient groups was the fact the, the, the reason for the costs that were generated by the patients. In the symptomatic patients, the costs were due to repeated PAD hospitalizations, revascularizations, and amputations. Whereas in those asymptomatic patients, the costs were due to cardiovascular hospitalizations and revascularizations. Another way to look at costs is to look at the presence of polyvascular disease. Now most PAD patients do not have PAD by itself, only about 30% do. About half of the patients have PAD along with coronary artery disease, and then the rest have PAD in conjunction with some combination of coronary or cerebrovascular disease. If we look at costs in these uh, polyvascular disease patients, for PAD patients, the average per patient cost is about $9,300 a year. And that's about the same as the cost for a patient with PAD and cerebrovascular disease. When you, however, when you look at patients with PAD and coronary disease, the cost goes up to 12,700 rounded. And if you look at the patients who have all three of these diseases, then the cost goes up to exceed $16,000 per year. <clears throat> Finally, if we look at the cost of leg disease versus heart disease versus stroke, in 2010, the annual, the total economic cost of PAD was about $164 billion, CAD $129 billion, so PAD exceeded coronary disease, and vastly exceeded cerebrovas cerebrovascular disease costs of $41 billion. So the economic conclusions, the macroeconomic cost of PAD is high, Hospital costs account for the majority of total PAD costs. Hospital costs are significantly increased by cardiovascular and non-PAD events. Asymptomatic patients are as costly as those with symptoms. The reasons are different though for the costs. The presence of polyvascular disease increases costs. And in 2010, the costs of PAD exceeded those of CAD and CVD. We thank you, my exhausted staff, thank you.